This is crazy. Welcome to the morning show. <laughs> Yes, as you can see, we're now in uh, San Francisco, overlooking uh, the Golden Gate Bridge. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's two days after after what was supposed to be Ironman California, but yeah, as you all know, it uh, it got cancelled like uh, 50, one hour, 45 minutes or something before before the gun was supposed to to go off. Uh, well, I, to, to be honest, right there, then and there, I wasn't that, you know, disappointed. I was mostly relieved because it felt it felt really dangerous actually to be out for eight hours on a day like that. Uh, and uh, what I feared most would be the hypothermia thing. Uh, so uh, it it yeah would have been completely impossible, I think, to to maintain uh, yeah a a safe body temperature. I had like a little bit of a panic <laughs> before, uh, but uh, both my brother and my father can vouch for that I actually, uh, yeah, I uh, sat down on the bus towards the towards the start. So I had every intention of starting. Actually, I never thought about not starting, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and uh, Gil is happy. <laughs> I really want to race today! Yeah. <laughs> I, really... I feel like I can bet for the not day. Yeah, right, right, right. But nobody can say if it's real. I'm going to the swim stop uh, with my wife. Oh, you do? Yeah. But wait, nobody. 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 <laughs> oh, you went by yourself? Yeah. Oh, oh no, no. okay. No. I say, Always the wrong place. There is a problem. <laughs> but I'm, I'm actually quite, I'm relieved to be honest. I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm relieved. Yeah, that's, I laid out there, I'm relieved. <laughs> I'm happy, it's, it's castle. Ah, it's a great decision. It's uh, very dangerous with the wind and the, and the rain. And uh, maybe uh, if the race will be uh, yesterday, it's a great day, but uh, we can choose and uh, it's a great decision. Uh, hope I can race again with uh, Rasmus because I like to uh, to race with him and uh, we make a stronger bike another day. Maybe uh, next race. <laughs> yeah, you've been riding with Rasmus uh, two times. Yeah, two times. How, how is that? Two podium. I think uh, Rasmus take a uh, chance for me. <laughs> it's my, uh, how I say in English, uh, trèfle. Uh, the flower of the chance. Uh, the chance. Oh, yeah! Yeah! <laughs> yeah. Hey. And, and, oh. and, and uh, yeah, you're the same for me because <laughs> yeah, I have yeah, my yeah. great races uh, together with you as well. If you should win, I would be as almost as happy as, as the grass oh, one. Me. Yeah. yeah, it's the same for me. Yeah. <laughs> I really like uh, yeah. you guys. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. yeah. I really appreciate to race and train uh, together. Yeah. 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 But now, like when when things have started to to sink in a little bit, it feels really, you know, it, it's it's such a bummer. Uh, been traveling halfway around the world to, to race, and uh, you know it it ends up like this. At least I, I felt like I, I did pretty much everything that I could in in the in the build up, and. Um, I, it, it was a rather challenging build up actually because I had some uh, mechanical issues with my bike when I got to when I got to the United States which I was able to solve so 
uh, and and I managed. Well, I feel kind of proud how I managed to adapt to the situation that I uh, that I found myself in. And uh, uh, I was uh, my my initial plan was to do a really sort of big training week. Uh, the second week, like uh, two weeks before before the race, and that week, you know, it ended up being, um, being very little training due to the mechanical issues, and that's uh, that's not the way I, I wanted it. So I adjusted my 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 sort of like build up. So I, I put in sort of three really big days: Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and I felt reasonably good during those days. And uh, then I sort of eased up the training a little bit. And uh, the day before the race, during a taper session, I felt I felt awesome on the bike. Uh, and so so I'm I'm quite sure I, I nailed the preparations quite well. Uh, so that's I'm, I'm going to try and take with me that from this race that I you know once again. In Austria, I was also very happy with my with my tapering or, or the race conditional work that I did uh, before the race. Oh, oh, hello there. Going it home. <laughs> it's nice and cozy in this car. Because <laughs> yes. we were a little bit too many uh, people and bikes. Yes. Robert <laughs> is driving. Yeah. Because I'm the tallest. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, we're gonna show you later where Rasmus is. Yeah. He's uh, at the moment uh, somewhere <laughs> behind <laughs> all that bike gear. <laughs> Rasmus, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> sure. All right, so here we have the VIP transportation from the uh, competition. Here we go. Here they are. Yeah. Right, anything uh, more positive that you can uh, take with you from this trip? Uh, yeah, I mean, I have to admit, it was uh, I was like on a, a child on Christmas Eve when I when I saw some interviews with John and he had actually paid attention to my my bike uh, in uh, in Austria, uh, the split and my my numbers there, and um, yeah, I'm, that's I'm really proud of myself for that ride and. Uh, it, it, yeah, that was really cool. You know, I wanted to race him, and uh, at least uh, he knows who I am <laughs> now. And that's uh, that feels like a small victory in itself, to be honest. And and Gustav as well. He said some really nice things on his uh, in in some interviews and on his YouTube channels. And that was uh, yeah, I was I was over the moon actually to hear that. And uh, yeah, I, I played it over and over again. <laughs> but you know, coming out and preparing for, you know, say 320 watts on the bike and then going out at 340, not gonna work. Um, it, it might, although I actually I saw, I saw one of those guys that put up some crazy numbers from, I think Ironman Austria. And, you know, some people can just get away with it and it's it's fascinating to see. There's a bike guy who can really ride a bike and, um, you know, just another dynamic that comes into this race. Of course, with the down river swim, it kind of favors the weaker swimmer. And um, then there's some really explosive power on the, on the bike going on. And um, we'll see who's got what left on the run. Uh, Svenningsson, he is uh, really the dark horse here. His uh, sessions have been amazing, so I think he will be one to fight for the victory. Uh, uh, I couldn't really believe it, but... Uh... Yeah, that that felt, uh, and, and Lionel said some really nice things also, which uh, these have been uh, so great role models for me for so long time, and uh, you know, to be, yeah, someone that uh, they think of like uh, at least they're paying a little bit of attention to, that feels, yeah, that feels super cool. I mean, uh, I actually remember this when I. I watched the, my first World Ironman World Championship was uh, 2015, uh, the same year I had done my first Ironman in 13 hours, and Jan won. And now you know I'm about to to race him, and uh, yeah, apparently he doesn't see me as maybe like someone to to keep an eye on at least, and that's yeah, that's really cool. I think <laughs> I was really you know before Ironman California. I was really tempted to go to South Africa uh, to race there, but decided like uh, for for a few uh, for several reasons to, to go to California instead. But now, now I think uh, I'm definitely gonna gonna target Ironman South Africa, train for another 
two or three weeks. Uh, really hard to maintain some fitness, and then uh, then we'll see what we can do there. Um, it's uh, I mean that course is is spectacular uh, from like you know just a beauty perspective and. Uh, I got really good memories from there as well. I won my first age group uh, race there, uh, and um, yeah, I, I love to come back. I love Africa as a continent as well, and um, so yeah, I think I can. I can. Um, it, it's been a long season, and uh, you know, it's been kind of many ups and downs uh, on the way. And but uh, I do think uh, Ironman South Africa is sort of like a target. It's a destination and a race that's exciting enough to, to really make it worth another you know three weeks of, of really focused training. There are some there are also some similarities between uh, uh, the water down here and the water in South Africa <laughs> and that's that they uh, they contain some really scary animals. So that's going to be like yeah what animals are you talking about? Why, great white sharks. Are you afraid of great white sharks? Extremely afraid. I am so afraid. That's yeah. Though that's uh, that's my worst nightmare to be eaten by a, a great white shark. I mean, that's not the way I want to go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Do you want to? Do you want to uh, tell everybody? Uh, what you have done, uh, actually? Yeah, I was behind a cage once. Uh, was in the cage? In the cage, yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, the cage was very, very strong. Uh, so the sharks couldn't uh, couldn't get in. But, uh, but, but I mean, it did not, you know, it did not uh, take away my fear. It was uh, quite the opposite, actually. Because uh, you know, everyone says that the great white sharks, they are so intelligent and everything, but uh, that's not the impression that I got when I when I saw them uh, because uh, they were like uh, uh, throwing out some uh, textile seal and the sharks they thought that was a seal and you know if they thought that thing you know like a piece of fabric was a shark then I think it was a seal then I think you know they can uh, definitely think of me as a prey as well so uh, yeah that was uh, that was not a good. I mean, it was a cool experience, but uh, it got me to respect these creatures and what uh, what is belief in the dark, in the water, <laughs> to respect that very very much. <laughs>